uh, welcome back again to the second lecture uh, in this module uh, of uh, linear first and second order equations. In the first lecture uh, we have completely studied the first order linear equations and we essentially seen that uh, the first order linear equations both homogeneous and uh, non homogeneous can be essentially converted into the integral calculus problem. This is actually a general feature of that uh, an another class of problem called exact differential equations. So, basically we have seen that first order linear equations can, can be put it in the exact differential form if necessary by multiplying by a suitable function called integrating factor. So, there is a complete study of the uh, first order linear equations, uh, but uh, such an uh, easy way of determining the solutions to second order linear equations is not available, but uh, before going to the second order uh, linear equations, we will introduce uh, uh, in this lecture the concept of exact differential equations. And there is another interesting class which probably most of you are familiar called uh, separable equation. The separable equations also uh, uh, can be integrated out straight away and it falls in the category of exact differential equation. So, I will uh, give you one or two quick examples of separable equations and then we will move on to the uh, exact differential equations uh, in this lecture. So, separable equations. separable equations. So, a differential equation of the form if you have if you can write a differential uh, equation of the form dy by dt is equal to uh, h of t into g of phi. So, this equation need not have to be linear at all. this equation need not have to be linear, but it is in the separable form h t the dependent variable and independent variables are separated out. So, you can write formally this one in the form d y by d y d y by g of y is equal to d t of h of t and then one can integrate because it is an integral one can actually integrate and then find the solutions. Okay. So, you will this implies you can have integral of d y by d y g of y is equal to integral of d t by h t plus a constant uh, which can be solved. So, this is also an easy class of equations from the nonlinear equations in general which can be solved easily. So, we will start with a familiar example which all of you are already familiar. So, for example, you want to have a example. simple example other complicated examples you can do it, but the idea is not all the time to make the ideas clear rather than the getting into the complications of the integrals here. So, look at uh, uh, the easier equation t of phi, which you already seen it this can be solved immediately by d y by d y this is in the separable form here h t is equal to t g of phi is equal to y. So, h uh, d y by d d y by y is equal to d t by d y by d y is equal to t d t actually not t t y that implies you have to always do this procedure of log mod y in general log mod y is equal to t square by 2 plus a constant and then you do the uh, normal procedure mod y is equal to so it is a constant say c 1 you can put it you can write this mod y is equal to some constant c into e power d square by 2, but then the same procedure which I have told this can be brought it here and is a continuous function a continuous function whose modulus is constant implies finally, a, uh, y is of the form c e power t by square by 2 this all of you are familiar and it is much more easy. So, I will go to the next example 
another example interesting. So, we will have one or two examples in this situation example. When you go to it is a slightly different equation of the form d y by d t. So, there is a change d y by d t equal to minus t by y. Of course, this is not in the category of the normal equations because this function as a function of t and y is not continuous at there. So, this is a kind of this is in the category of singular differential equation. So, if you write this equation this is of the form y d y by d t is equal to minus t or in the formal notation of a symbolic integral this is nothing but to minus t d t. So, naturally you can expect trouble at this uh, at the origin because as I told you the moment there are coefficients whose vanishes it comes what are called the singular equation. In general we do not treat with the singular equations, but in other modules uh, you will see uh, some special class of singular equations if our time permits. So, if you go here, so naturally you can expect trouble near the origin which is exhibited that is why we want to show this example. So, if you integrate that one you will get y square plus some constant plus t square equal to constant. You see, that is a general solution in for this first order equation, but if we want to understand this graph, these are nothing but circles. Circles, you see, this equation of the uh, circle in the implicit form. So, I want to understand the solution curves here. So, if you uh, plot, if you are trying to solve this equation, it is not possible to solve uniquely. So, you will have different solutions and you have to understand. So, you have y t if you write it this will be square root of plus or minus c minus uh, t square you see and this if you want to have a real solution then if t has to be that means t square has to be less than c or less than or equal to c. So, you see 0 less than t square less than equal to c. So, that shows that the solution exists you have the solution exists solution solution for mod t less than or equal to c. So, if you are trying to plot these curves so you have to branch out. So, if you have a, this will be more clear. So, if you have an a point here so, this solution curves are something like circles, these are circles actually. So, you have solution curves like this. Similarly, you will have solution curves uh, from here. So, these are two, uh, two uh, different solution curves for the initial value problem. So, let me put it that way. So, you will have solution curves cur coming that depends on each c. So, you will have depending on you will have a minus root c here we will find out what is that minus root c and you will have root c. So, let us look at an initial value problem. So, if you want if so if you have the initial value problem i v p and suppose you have described y at t naught is equal to y naught. Okay. So, if that is a thing to determine your c here your this will imply your c will satisfy y naught square plus t naught square. So, this will imply your solution is y square yeah, plus t square is equal to y naught square plus t naught square for your information. So, if you try to see this uh, thing, so if uh, so it depends on where y naught is depending on the sign of y naught which branch of the solution which is the solution uh, defined thing. So, suppose assume that. So, let me plot the curves in the same page. So, that we will complete this uh, particular problem. So, suppose your y naught is positive what will happen. So, if you have this uh, if you try to plot this curve let me again come back to the uh, let me take another color. So, if you plot this. 
So, you have your T naught here somewhere your T naught, it can be T naught can go negative also and your Y naught here. So, if you have Y naught, so you will have the circle. So, you, if your Y naught is here, so this is your Y naught. So, your uh, T naught Y naught. So, you see the solution X is only so this is nothing but square root of Y naught square plus T naught square, this will be this point will be minus of square root of Y naught square plus T naught square. So, you have see, so you have your solutions uh, from existing in the interval uh, mode T, the solution X is mode T less than or equal to uh, plus square root of Y naught square plus T naught square. That is an interesting example. On the other hand, if you if this is the case Y naught is uh, negative positive, if you have Y naught is negative, you will have the other branch. You will see, you will have the other branch where you are here, this is a Y naught here, Y naught. So, that is how solutions will come in like that. So, the solution is defined from this interval. So, this uh, of course, you cannot have anything, you have trouble at the origin because of these singularities. So, you will have the solution curve. So, it is an interesting example of a separable equation one can deal with it. You can also use these equations to solve sometimes separable equations can be used to, to solve a, a second order equation. So, let me uh, present you one more example without details, yeah, but uh, second order equation. Suppose, you have a simple equation of the form y square equal to, we have not studied second order equation, but you do not need to know anything about the second order equation. Suppose, you have this equation, what you do is that you put v is equal to y prime, then this equation will become uh, v prime is equal to v prime equal to you have your equation t square v. So, you see you can this is a first order equation first order and you can solve for v t. So, you can write down your v t by the usual way some constant c 1 into e power t cubed by 3. So, you can have your solution. And now, what is V t? This is nothing but d y by d t. So, you have another first order equation which you can integrate and eventually you can write your solution y t is equal to c 1 integral of e power t q by 3 plus some c t that is it another constant and you will get. So, such equations are uh, can be solved. So, I will uh, give a probably you can try another exercise for you exercise try the equation a simple equation y double prime y prime equal to t into 1 plus t find the solutions of the initial value problem y at 0 is equal to 1 y prime 0 is equal to 2. So, you have to the, so you can uh, get the find the solution and the solution. So, this is because of the special form as you see that because of this special form there is no y here you are able to bring it to the uh, thing see same thing you can do it you can bring it down this uh, this equation you can bring it out the first order equation solve it and then you will get another first order equation and then uh, uh, find the solutions to it that's what with this uh, two x uh, two three examples now we will go to what is called the exact differential equation so in this uh, lecture we will try to uh, explain certain things about the exact differential equations and then we will move on to the uh, second order linear equations and uh, 
uh, how to study second order linear equations. Okay. So, we will go to what is called exact differential equation. We are covering these things even though these are all important and these are the things uh, uh, taught in the university system. So, we want to go to that, but we are, uh, advise the students those who are taking this course to work out a few more examples than I am explaining here to get familiarized these things. So, what do we have seen? So, basically we have studied three types of equation. One is the integral calculus problem. Suppose, you are given an equation of this form. This is the integral calculus problem. That is what I terminology I am using here. Integral calculus. That is the first thing we have studied. The second thing is what we have studied is the first order linear equation y prime plus p t y is equal to q t. This is what we have so far completed. This is the first order linear linear equation and essentially what we have seen is that uh, by multiplying suitably if necessary you can bring back to everything you can bring back to the integral calculus problem. And third one what we have studied now is y prime is of the form this is non-linear, but separable form h of t into g of y separable form. All these equations are in the category of this exact differential equations that is what we will be. Uh, so, we will want to formally study this exact. As I said the, the ge most general form of di your differential equation is f t y y prime equal to 0. You can define the, the no terminology of exact differential equations even for this equation, but we are since we are not planning to deal with this more general equation, our equation what we are considering is uh, the standard one d y d t is equal to f of t y. So, let me uh, start with the thing. Suppose, there is a two variable function. Suppose, there exists a function phi which is a function of two variable where you this is very important thing. It is not that when I am defining phi, v is restricted to n we do not treat that y is a depend uh, independent uh, dependent variable of t y is not just y t right now phi is defined in a domain uh, uh, of the plane t y. So, where you treat both t and y are independent variable. So, it is a two variable function when I write y t then you are basically restricting your y t to the solution curves. At present it is a function of two variables in the t y plane basically such that uh, you can write this equation. So, let me define even for this thing or this full equation you can write it such that you can write your f of t y of t y prime of t you see now you restrict as a total derivative that is what if you look at the studies of these three equations 1, 2, 3 uh, essentially we have done this thing of d by d t of phi of t y t. Suppose there exists such a function satisfying this thing, then that implies d by d t of phi of t y t equal to 0. In other words, this can be integrated now. So, that is why phi t, so the solutions are given in implicit form is constant. These are the solutions in implicit form, solutions in implicit form. So, such differential equations are called such differential equations are called exact differential equations, exact differential equations. So, we want 
exact differential equations. So, we want conditions under which a, we want some verifying conditions. So, that we want to know whether a given differential equation is exact or not. If the given differential equation is exact, you can immediately find the solutions and what we have seen is in the case of 1, 2, 3, whether in the calculus first order or separable equations you can do this quickly. And if not, if the differential equation is not exact, can you find a some multiplying factor? Can you multiply the differential equation? So, that the multiplied differential equation is exact. So, we want to so you with that in mind that multiplication factor is also in mind we are going to see something more general. So, from we we consider slightly more general equation than the previous one. Uh, so, we are going to consider something more more means you can also the multiplying factors are taking into account. So, we uh, in this differential equation we will see soon that uh, we consider equations of the form equations of the form m t y plus n t y into d y by d t is equal to 0 you see where m and n are functions of two variable are functions of that is what again functions of two variables t and y two vari so it is defined on some domain in t y plane t y we will de define that of course this equation so let me call this equation one which we are going to use it and also mark it here so you can immediately this equation equation 1 is more general than more general than uh, d y by d t is equal to f of t y. Let me call this 2 2. Why it is more general? You can always write your equation 2 uh, a equation 2 in the form of 1 we can write two in the form 1 by choosing choosing m equal to minus f n equal to 1 or f is equal to minus uh, f is of the form m by n you see. But the advantage of choosing the equation 1 is that you will be able to even if you multiply by this is one choice of m and n. But what we can do is that you can also multiply by a multiplying factor the same multiplying factor for m and n and you get back the same f. So, the advantage is that you can write f in the form m by m in different ways with the different factors. And what we will see that for certain representations the equations may not be f, uh, exact, but if you choose a appropriate multiplying factor it is possible that you get the exactness of the differential equation. This is exactly <coughs> we will be doing it. So, you can see that uh, and this x. So, this gives you an, an equation 1 gives you an added advantage of representing this equation. In books I also want to uh, make sure to students who are studying the university system quite often these equations will be written in this form m d t plus n d y equal to 0. Okay. So, but I want to retain in this form so that we have do not have any uh, any ambiguity of d t d y, but basically this is it that here. So, what we are going to say for example, let me give you one example here and then we will go to the theory a quick example a simple example. So, consider this equation 1 plus cos of t plus y 
and uh, plus cos of t plus y dy by dt equal to 0. So, it is but this can be easily seen it is not uh, very easy to see that this is nothing but you can see that uh, you do not need uh, much knowledge about it. This is nothing but t if you differentiate you get 1 sin you differentiate this one then you will have the other factor you see t plus sin of t plus 1 you see. So, if you differentiate you get this one this differential product form and uh, you will have that quickly you have to differentiate uh, this one also that is what will give you if you differentiate this will have these two terms. So, this equation will reduce to this form and you can find that this gives you the solution in implicit form you see solution t plus sin of t plus y is equal to constant you see. So, again many of these things not that every differential equation is exact. So, we will go to uh, so our interest is to find these equations. So, we want to uh, when a differential equation exact when a differential equation 1 keep that in one in mind one for us one is this one and this is our differential equation 2. Okay. So, we want to know when is the uh, difference when a differential equation of the form 1 exact that is our form 1 exact that is our cut. Suppose it is exact let us look for that is what you are looking is a suppose we want to derive the thing suppose it is exact suppose uh, 1 is exact. What does that mean there exists phi assume the differentiability of mu such that m plus I am uh, dy by dt equal to 0 dy by dt. I am suppressing uh, the variables t and y. So, if you want you can write m t y in the beginning. So, that gives you if this is x at if there exists a function this is equal to d by d t of phi t y. Okay. Now, of course, y is all treated as a function of y. So, if you do the uh, uh, total derivative if you calculate this will be d by uh, d phi by d t plus you will have d phi by d y into d y by d t. This immediately you can uh, this uh, because of this one of course, from here you cannot conclude m is equal to d phi by d t and equal to d, d but that gives you a necessary sufficient condition. So, you will have immediately a sufficient condition sufficient condition. What is a sufficient condition? If there exists phi smooth whatever smoothness you required such that uh, m is equal to d phi by d t. So, you are uh, looking for a two variable function. So, you are looking for a two variable function c phi such that a single two variable function phi such that m is its derivative with respect to the first argument d phi by d t and n is the derivative with respect to the second argument. Uh, not d phi by d t d phi by d y that will imply is then the one is exact. So, you have so you want to know more about it then one is no. So, the question is that so you can immediately see that uh, this thing. So, the so the question we want to so we want to post the question now in this form question uh, one given two functions m and n given two functions two functions in two variable m and n m is a function of two variable in a domain in t y plane n equal to n t y does there exist the question is that does there exist does there exist f function phi 
such that uh, m is equal to d phi by d t. So, the question we formulated. So, at least we get it n is equal to d phi by d y. So, if you can do that you can answer this question. So, you have the uh, you have the so you see so the question of control of yes, question of uh, x at differentiability x at differential equation uh, uh, can be answered if you can find that one. So, that is a question we want to answer. So, let me put it in a uh, in the form of a theorem a simple theorem it is not a difficult theorem. So, I want to make write a short theorem. Suppose m n belongs to this notation probably you may study uh, this is uh, c 1 of d is net uh, nothing but a continuously differentiable functions uh, a function is continuous in a domain d where let us the d is a rectangle you can write it in r t y plane a b cross c d. So, you see it is a two variable function defined on a domain in r 2 r 2 is the t y plane and m and then you need smoothness that is is continuously differentiable then then there exists phi such that m is equal to d phi by d t n is equal to d phi by d y this is an if and only if if and only if d phi by d y is equal to d phi by uh, no sorry you want uh, the uh, interesting thing you want conditions uh, in terms of the uh, m and if and only if d m by d y is equal to d n by d t. So, you see the interesting fact here is the condition in terms of the given data m and n are functions given to you in the differential equation. So, you can verify a given differential equation the moment you put your differential equation is of the form uh, m plus n d y by d t you can check that condition at easy condition to be checked at just a differentiation which anybody can do it easily to verify that it is a exact differential equation or not. And the condition is not very sufficient because one way is trivial because if d m by d y is equal to d n by d t this is equal to saying that d square phi by d y d t equal to d square phi by d t d y in x interchange of differentiation is true. So, you immediately get one part of it and then proving the other part is also not difficult. So, we will give you a proof of that uh, uh, we will give a proof of it because it is not very difficult it is easy. So, uh, assume one condition so we will have a we will uh, uh, have the con uh, thing one way proving it ok there exists phi that is fine. So, we will prove this part first simply. So, assume phi x is assume phi x is satisfying m equal to d phi by d t and n equal to d phi by d y. Then that implies this is a trivial part I am telling d m by d y is equal to d square phi by d y d t by interchanging for smooth functions can be interchanged by interchanging you get this is equal to d n by d t. So, that is fine. So, that is ok. So, converse converse is the one you have to prove. So, you want to prove this one. So, assume 
d m by d y equal to d n by d t. Now, what we have to prove? We have to prove the existence of phi satisfying these two conditions. We want to find the existence of phi satisfying these conditions. So, if you look at here, so if you look at this equation, you want to satisfy these two conditions, you want to do that one. So, what do we do? We, so, we have to achieve two constraints, we have to find one v satisfying two equations m equal to d phi by d t and we also have to satisfy the same phi satisfying this thing. So, what do we do is that, so whenever you have difficulty two objectives to be achieved, first we concentrate first we uh, keep it keep aside one of the constraints and look at only the other constraints, so we can see that whether we can find this thing. So, that is what we are doing it. So, look at the uh, constraint one. So, take uh, take uh, consider, so consider this equation, you want to see that we do not know we want to know this, does there exist m t y is equal to d phi by d t t y, you want to prove this one. So, look at here this equation that is the first uh, idea of uh, understanding this equation. When you look at this equation, it is nothing but a first order O D E in t and y appears like a parameter, that is what it is a parameter, that is what you have to see that. So, there, are, uh, there is no differentiation with respect to y. So, you can see that this is nothing but a first order equation, we use this d by d t, partial d by d t to represent that there is another variable. So, this is an equation in t variable, first order equation in t variable, treating it as m is given to you and at t y. So, you have to just integrate. So, this is an integral calculus problem, what we have studied in the last class is an integral calculus problem for the differential equation in t. So, if you integrate the, so choose so the best way of that you choose phi such that phi t y is just integrate m, that is a natural way to do the integration f t y and integration is with respect to t, but of course, when you integrate there will be an integral con constant that is where the difference comes when you have an integration constant and that constant will depending on this parameter. So, each fixed parameter y for each fixed parameter y you will have a constant h then the parameter changes this constant change. So, here you have a function of y l and this constant is the unknown now. So, the constant unknown function in y. So, if you differentiate naturally, if you differentiate d phi by d t, you will take if you differentiate d phi d phi by t t, you get uh, d, uh, this uh, differentiation, you will bring it inside d m by d t and this will vanish and your first equation is satisfied. So, that is what you do it, but now you have the constraint of the second equation. So, now substitute this in the second equation. So, you differentiate. So, you want to determine still you want to determine uh, you want to determine h. So, to determine h you use the second condition of 1. So, differentiate. So, you have to differentiate now differentiate with respect to y that will imply you have to do a proper differentiation you have to differentiate with respect to y. Now, this is an integration with respect to the, this is an integration with respect to t. So, the integral would not get cancelled. So, the integral would not get cancelled. So, you will have the integration coming here, the integral of d m by d y suppressing the argument and but d t. So, you have d t here and then you have to differentiate uh, h, you have to differentiate h with respect to y. So, that it is a, we will denote it by h prime of y because there is only one argument or you can write it d h by d y and you want this to be we, we want n equal to d phi by d y. So, that implies, so you have an equation, so you have that implies n is equal to integral of 
m d m by d y d t where h prime of y you see. So, that implies a differential equation in y variable now that is you will get that is so let us come back that is h prime of y is equal to n minus integral of d m by d y d t. So, you integrate. So, n n m are fine you will be able to find this one. Okay. So, integrate integrate again it is an integral calculus problem integrate, but integrate with respect to y you will get uh, h of y is equal to integral of you have to do that integration n minus integral of d m by d y integral of d m by d y integrated with respect to t you see and then this integration is with respect to y. So, you have that one. So, what is your phi to y? That implies your phi t y look at that. So, y t y so, you have the your phi t y is here where is your ah, phi t y is here you have an integral m t y h here. So, you will have So, you will have your phi t y is equal to integral of m d t plus integral of n this is n d y and then minus integral of integral of d n by d t d y so, you see. so, we have started with the equation. So, we have started with the equation first for m and then we used for n. You can also do with the other way, you can start with n first and then you can start with m and you will have a different form that does not matter that I will leave it as an exercise. So, you see instead of a, a m first starting you start with n and then proceed. So, you will have instead of h of y you will have some h of t and you proceed that way and you can write down this equation. All this can be integrated out. So, you will have an uh, phi and the you will have the phi t y equal to constant are the solutions to this uh, differential equation. So, with this definition because there is a necessary and sufficient condition I can redefine my definition now a definition I can do the uh, redefine a differentially. So, because I would prefer to give conditions in terms of the given data the given uh, data is m and n. So, I can define the exact differentiation the earlier definition if there exists an phi satisfying the conditions like uh, m equal to d phi by d t and n equal to d, uh, d phi by d y. But then a phi is coming into definition in the uh, in the definition. So, but we have a definition of the exact differential equation. The differential equation of the form the differential equation of the form m plus n d y by d is said to be exact said to be exact if d m by d y is equal to d n by d t you see. So, so it is a just an easy verification. So, if you want to determine a differential equation is exact or not you have to just compute this differential equation. Okay. So, we will uh, say for example, if you want to have an example again an example like quick example. You can have plenty of example, but uh, let me is an artificially cooked up example, but any equation you can do it 3 y plus e power t 
you have to put the differential equations in per if a general problem is given you have to put it in a suitable way cos of y into d y by d t. This is a cooked up example. So, that is not a problem. So, what is m here 3 y plus e power t n is equal to 2 t plus cos y. So, you can compute your so your what is your d m by d y is quick to compute is nothing but 3 and what is your d n by d t is uh, so yeah this will not be exact. So, you have to have a say 3 t yeah d n by d t is so you this is not 2. So, you have 3 t so you have 3 so d n by d t is also equal to 3 you see the differential equation is exact. So, how do you proceed to find phi? You do that one, a step by step you do it. Therefore, uh, therefore, there exists phi such that you do not have to remember the formula, you can proceed to solve the problem. There exists phi such that m is equal to d phi by d t and n is equal to d phi by d y. You can integrate it out one by one. So, if you have what is d phi by d t you have to find out. So, you want uh, your d, so d phi by d t is equal to you have to solve that d phi by d t is equal to m m is equal to 3 y plus e power t you see which is a if you treat y as a variable this is a y as a parameter and t as a variable uh, which will give you you just integrate out out and you can write down phi t y is equal to uh, 3 y t. I have done the computation, but uh, I do not want to spend time here in computing, but uh, you can compute it you see. Now, you differentiate that you will imply d phi by d y equal to you compute d phi by d y. Uh, if I do that computation, this will be 3 t plus h prime of y you see a cube. So, that will imply and that has to be you want this to be d phi by d, uh, you want d phi by d y to be n that is how you want that to be n. So, you will have h prime of y is equal to n, n is given to you already here and you do proceed that one you have a 3 t, 3 t will get cancelled. So, it is nothing but sin y you see you got that. So, that you will imply h of y is of the form uh, cos y you see you can just integrate ok m or minus cos y. So, so, you will have your phi t y is equal to uh, 3 y t plus e power t plus sin y or sin y or cos y h of y is equal h prime of y is cos y right. Ah, h sorry h prime of y is equal to cos y here. So, h of y is equal to sin y here you can work with other things also that is not a problem you, know. so, you see. So, this equal to constant you will give you the solution. So, you can uh, you can work out uh, plenty of things like that. So, you can do that. So, the easier part is that you have a very easy condition in terms of uh, uh, d m by d y is equal to d n by d t that is the uh, advantage the verifying condition to be that. But if the differential equation is not exact that is going to be difficult and that is what we quickly in the next 10 minutes we are going to discuss with you uh, a quick discussion and then that will be the uh, we will complete this example. So, that again leads to what are called integrating factors integrating factors in general differential equation. So, the question is again question can we find a factor multiplying a multiplying factor multi multiplying factor which you already seen in the linear first order differential equation. So, multiplying mu 
is a function of nu t and y such that mu t y mu into m plus mu into n into d y by d t is equal to 0 e is exact you are interested in finding is exact you see of course this is similar if m plus n d y by d t equal is exact you do not have to do that the question is coming when m uh, plus n d y by d t is not exact uh, so that uh, so that means you do not have so this is the situation this is the situation situation when d m by d y not equal to d m by d t you see if d m by d is equal to if d m by d y is equal to d n by d t then that equation is going to be ex exact and you do not have to proceed further. So, now let us uh, suppose this is exact suppose this equation let me call it uh, 3 suppose 3 is exact what does that mean again suppose 3 is exact that is you have to satisfy this condition when m is replaced by mu m and n is replaced by mu n that is d by d y of mu m is equal to d by d t of mu n that is d mu by d y m plus mu d n by d y is equal to d mu by d t n plus mu d n by d t. Okay. Of course, this is a like a part if you want to determine this is like a partial differential equation and in general finding a solution to this equation is uh, difficult maybe by trial and error you may be able to cook up a thing. So, in general determining a solution to this differential equation is difficult and it is very rare. So, uh, so that is where the, the most general case ends for a very general uh, situation uh, you may not be able to find in general a solution to this differential. By some trial and error if you are successful in finding the solution to that differential equation uh, then you can do that one. But then there is a very interesting special case still it may work special case. The special case is actually interesting in the sense that sometimes when you demand little you may not get anything that is what the general thing. But on the other hand if you demand little more you may get something better and that is what is happening here. So, we are going to demand something more. Uh, so, we are going to demand uh, mu is equal to mu of t is a function of t alone. Of course, you can demand mu equal to mu of y is a function of y alone and a similar analysis can be done function of t alone. So, if that is the case look at this equation if mu is a function of t alone then this term vanishes and then you will have an equation of first order for t that is where the advantage. So, we are removing by demanding either mu is a function of t alone or mu is a function of y alone we are removing uh, the equation and the equation becomes a first order equation for ODE and which we can solve it that is what we will do that one. In that case what you will get is that you will get an equation of the form uh, mu t into that will imply if you write that equation mu t into d m by d y minus d n by d t is equal. We are not sure Stephen even this is solvable and a condition will be given soon now. So, this will be now you can write mu prime because mu is a function of y alone. So, into n. 
So, that implies mu prime of t by mu t is equal to d m by d y minus d n by d t into 1 over a you see okay. can this equation be solved for mu, but then look at the interesting fact this portion is a function of no alone function of t alone, but this is a function of both t and y because m and n are functions of t alone. So, if this happen to be that thing with the right hand side of this equation the right hand side of this equation is a function of t alone then this is a first order equation and it can integrate to the. So, assume if rather than assume if 1 over n let me write m of y for the simplicity mine of n of t is a function of function of t alone that is possible even though m and n are functions of both t and y the combined factor 1 over n m y minus n t can be a function of t alone then an integrate you see an integrating factor of the form mu equal to mu n t can be determined can be determined you see you can do that thing. So, uh, you see in that case so, this can be done even with when m uh, mu is a function of y l, uh, thing you will get something else here uh, the mu will come the, these things the roles of d m by d y and d n by d t will be interchanged 1 by n will become 1 by m if that happens to be. So, you have to verify that and this is valid because if equation is exact this going to be 0 d m by d y minus d n. this is the situation and d m by d y minus d n by d t not equal to 0 and in that case you need to calculate that one and determine by 1 by n or 1 by m and see that uh, which one is independent uh, it is only function of t alone. In the other case you see that it is a function of y alone in that case either mu of t can be determined or mu of y can be determined and you can multiply your differential equation with that mu t or mu of y to get the solution. And uh, this is more or less uh, the thing we want to uh, tell you in this class, but then I, uh, uh, I can uh, give two exercises for you to work out few, uh, one or two exercises is simple exercises I want you to work out and uh, the one equation I want I will write here 2 t you determine whether it is exact or what you can do it with that. I am not even stating the complete problem I will write only the equation t plus these are all again put up cos y and uh, plus 3 y square e power t dy by dt equal to 0. Yeah. Okay. So, this equation can be solved I want you to solve this equation you can see that this equation is exact. The second exercise is what you already seen I uh, consider this linear first order equation consider d y by d t plus p t y is equal to q t derive the integrating factor which you will see using this derive the integrating factor. You have seen the integrating factor already in the first order equation uh, studied earlier studied earlier. And the third one which I am going to stop it you see that uh, uh, the separable equations are exact separable equations are exact. Okay. So, with this we are going to fi uh, finish this class. Uh, so, you have seen that the first order equation can be it will be a exact differential equation by 
finding a suitable integrating factor which you are already seen and the separable equations are always exact. And in the next lecture uh, we will uh, uh, get into the second order linear differential equation. Thank you.